वेलकम टू वीक टू ऑफ ऑनलाइन लेक्चर सीरीज इट इज अरेंज बाय डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ केमिस्ट्री इन टूडेज पेपर दैट इज पेपर नंबर इलेवन फिजिकल केमिस्ट्री वी आर गोइंग टू डील्स विद द यूनिट नंबर वन दैट इज एलिमेंटरी क्वांटम मैकेनिक्स इट कंसिस्ट ऑफ नंबर ऑफ सब यूनिट्स और नंबर ऑफ सब सेक्शंस out of all subsections in today's lecture we are going to focus towards the drawback of classical mechanics de broglie hypothesis and heisenberg uncertainty principle drawbacks of classical mechanics de broglie hypothesis and the heisenberg uncertainty principle so what is classical mechanics the mechanics which is related to Newton's law of motions. Again, same mechanics is related to Maxwell theory of electromagnetic radiations, and more important thing is that it is related to macroscopic particles. Macroscopic particles means the particle having the larger size. But whenever we apply the classical mechanics for the smaller molecules, for example. microscopic particle so the behavior of this theory is little bit change so next is the drawback of classical mechanics first drawback of classical mechanics is it is not related or not suitable for black body radiations it is again not suitable for photoelectric effect and it again cannot explain the it is not related to micro particles for example electron protons and neutrons therefore to overcome about drawbacks that is black body radiations photoelectric effect a new mechanics is formed and which is called quantum mechanics so quantum mechanics overcome the drawback of classical mechanics so now go for the this scientist at extremely right hand side you observe the photo of one scientist name of that scientist is louis vector de broglie in the year of 1924 in his phd thesis he postulate the nature of light that is the light consists of wave as well as particle nature due to his assumption he got the nobel prize in 1929 for physics means for the study of this de broglie hypothesis now there are some statements and derivation of de broglie hypothesis so st statement is very easy the radiation that is light behave as a wave and associated with particle nature so it indicate the radiation that is a light it act as a wave as well as particles now derivation of this equations scientist de broglie combine the theory of max planck and einstein so uh, you already familiar with the max planck theory according to max planck theory the total energy of photon of light is given by e equal to h nu consider it is a equation number 1 and where h is the planck constant and nu is the frequency of radiations e equal to h nu equation number 1 where h is is nothing but the planck's constant and nu is the frequency of radiations next continue to this sections secondly the de broglie also collect the informations from einstein equations the energy of photon in that case it is considered it is as a particle so energy e of a photon of mass m is given by e equal to mc square e equal to mc square it is equation number 2 where m is the mass of photon and c is the velocity of light now combine the equation 1 and 2 what we get combining equation 1 and 
what we get so check in back side equation number 1 is e equal to h nu equation 1 is e equal to h nu and equation 2 is e equal to mc square both are the equation for energy so when energy term is same so remaining part is same so e equal to h nu and e equal to mc square as e get common so h nu equal to mc square equation number 3 okay for equation 1 e equal to h nu equation 2 e equal to mc square now combining this equation 1 and 2 we get h nu equal to mc square equation number 3 but from the definition of frequency of light is nothing but the ratio of speed of light upon wavelength it is nothing but the ratio of speed of light upon wavelength so therefore nu it is equal to c by lambda substitute the value of nu in equation number 3 so equation 3 changes to form replace nu by c by lambda so h c by lambda it is equal to mc square okay and you observe that the cc term get cancelled from both end cc term get cancelled from both end so which is remaining h upon lambda it is nothing but equal to mc thus lambda it is equal to h upon mc equation number 4 but from the definition of momentum p which is nothing but equal to m into c therefore the equation 4 changes to one form that is lambda equal to h upon p this equation is called equation number 5 give the number equation number 5 and equation number 5 is called de broglie equations or de broglie hypothesis and lambda it is called as de broglie wavelength so first section it is focus on the statement and derivation of de broglie hypothesis that is equation number 5 now again one scientist name is heisenberg Werner Heisenberg in 1927 he published the Heisenberg uncertainty principles for this purpose he got the nobel prize in physics in physical chemistry number of scientists work for the physics and apply that physics knowledge to physical chemistry so in this in the year of 1932 he got the nobel prize for this principle and at extremely right hand side you observe the photo of that werner heisenberg statement is very simple simultaneous and accurate determination of position and momentum simultaneous and accurate determination of position and momentum of a micro particle such as electron is impossible simultaneous and accurate determination of positions and momentum of a micro particle such as electron is impossible go for the mathematical equations so let delta x is uncertainty in position uncertainty in positions and delta p x is uncertainty in momentum uncertainty in momentum around x axis then according to the mathematical expressions provided by heisenberg delta x into delta px is greater than equal to h or in other words delta x into delta px is greater than equal to h upon 4 pi so the heisenberg principle also state that the product of uncertainty in positions you observe that there is a multiplication sign so heisenberg also stated that the product of uncertainty in positions that is delta x and the uncertainty in momentum that is delta px along x direction is always greater than or equal to planck's constant in previously de broglie equations you know that what is h h is planck's constant so the product of uncertainty in position and uncertainty in momentum 
along x direction is always greater than equal to planck's constant so some assumptions are there if more precisely we can determine the position less accurate is the momentum means if we determine only position then it is very difficult to determine momentum and secondly if we determine the momentum the position determination is less accurate so the heisenberg provides the probability approach you already know that the electron is continuously moving around the nucleus so it is very difficult to position it is very difficult to determine the position so therefore heisenberg provide the probability approach so in this section we deals with the drawback of classical mechanics de broglie hypothesis and heisenberg uncertainty principle and here in heisenberg we can find the area in space where the probability of finding the electron is more instead of exact locations so we only find the area through which we we are going to find the electron thank you very much so uh, my previous videos are on the i buttons if you are going to click on the i buttons you will going to find my uh, videos that is the lecture 1 okay after pressing the i button thank you very much